Economists everywhere agree, we love trade. Joseph Stiglitz loves his trade, and Paul Krugman certainly loves his. Economists love it so much that we are willing to get date trade, get hitched, and have little free trade babies. Now, generally, this is because we see it as being Pareto efficient. If two economic agents voluntarily undergo trade, it must mean that both parties experience net welfare gains from the transaction. Trade allows for such Pareto improvements, but it will be hard to see why without understanding first the principles of both comparative and absolute advantage. Fundamentally, free trade exploits Adam Smith's theory of specialization, which he introduced with his pin factory. Now, I alone will find it very hard to make more than 10 pins a day, but if I hire some workers, one of which straightens the metal, another pounds the head flat, and another sharpens the tip, we can make hundreds of these pins, but only if each worker specializes in one particular task. Likewise, at the international level, certain countries may have factors that allow them to make certain goods at a lower opportunity cost. China and Vietnam have cheap, non-unionized labor, so they enjoy a cost advantage when it comes to making manufacturers like toys, gowns, or even pins. New Zealand has lots of land, so it can make cheap milk and pork for export. The US is awash with capital and skilled workers, so it makes Boeing jets and microscopes cheaper than anybody else. Now, at the H2 level, how either AA or CA arise is not important. At the H3 level, however, you will learn that these can be due to different factor endowments, explained via the heckscher oling theorem, or it can be due to Michael Porter's theory of competitive advantage. For example, Singapore doesn't have oil fields, but its highly trained university graduates enable to make cheap oil rigs. Jagdish Bhagwati's kaleidoscopic CA explains how on earth China can enjoy cost savings in, for example, making US iPhones and iPads.